Army worms are coming. Not only has South Africa just recovered from drought in the maize producing areas, but now the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries confirming that the recent pest infestation to crops across Limpopo and Northwest provinces is in fact the fall army worm. It looks like a silkworm. It's about the same size as a silkworm, but it's considerably more destructive. Just how much do we know about army worm for a country that is only just starting to recover from the effects of that major drought? How much impact will it have on South Africa, but also for the SADC region? This is The Money Makers. I'm Bruce Whitfield, and I'm joined by the Chief Executive of Grain SA, Yanni de Villiers, to look at how we are reacting to the army worm. It's a pest, what, two, three centimeters long? Yeah, no, it's new to South Africa. We had army worm in the past, another species. Um, it's normally just after a drought you get an outbreak of this. It was mostly in northwest, and I think we've controlled it in the past fairly well. It just seems like what is coming now down from Africa is a lot bigger. And uh, we are now still testing, you know, whether it is resistant or the GMO maize is resistant to the army worms. Uh, but there are chemicals being registered under the Department of Agriculture, emergency registration, because we haven't had it in the past. And the farmers are busy spraying it. It's very expensive. Mm -hmm. I think uh, some farmer just told me it's about 600 rand per hectare. Um, is that expensive uh, in chemical terms? Yes, it's very expensive. All right. Now, just, let's go back a little bit. and I want to go through the, the sort of the chain of events. Where does the army worm originate from? Yeah, I think it's from America, yeah. uh, Southern America, Northern America. This is where, where it was first found. And uh, I think last year they detected it in Nigeria. And, and how would it have crossed the ocean? Inside, inside crop imports? Or? Yeah, uh, probably. I think it was probably in this way. I, I'm, I'm, I, I can't mm. see those moths you know, crossing the ocean. So no. I think it was in the crops that, that were exported to Africa. And this, this thing moves at a hell of a pace. I mean, they call it an army worm because it moves at the pace of Blitzkrieg. Yeah. I mean, that's my, my impression of it. Yeah, anyway. and, it, and it also I think one of the other things that they said, you know, they, they, they eat almost anything. I mean, they, they eat the grass, they eat, you know, maize, sorghum. Um, uh, plants, uh, uh, flowers even, I mean, they, they, they're very aggressive. Anybody who knows the story of Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat goes to the biblical times and goes to the plagues of Egypt. Um, and locusts were a plague then, and we've had plagues of locusts across Africa for, for many years. Um, that we've seemed to have got a control o o over those. Army worm, however, is a different beast altogether. Does it move? Do the physical worms move physically, or is it a case of the worms eat, die out, the moths come, lay their eggs, and that's how the, the, they move? Yes, yes. I think the moths, you know, some of, some of the researchers and the, and the scientists told us that, you know, they can fly quite strongly and uh, probably with wind, uh, you know, it, it spread quite widely in, and this is what we experienced this year. It was first detected, I think, in Zambia and then it was mentioned in, in Zimbabwe and then all of a sudden it was Limpopo, you know. Now, what's interesting about this is Zambia and Zimbabwe have been hard hit. They've got very strong anti-genetically modified crop legislation. They, yeah. They're not big fans of it. We've got quite a lot of GMO crops in South Africa, massively controversial. Mm -hmm. People are very frightened of GMO crops. But what I take comfort from in this particular case is if the army worm is American and if the GMO crops are American, they've been devised to withstand the appetites of the army worm. Is yeah. that, is that a, a useful connection? I, I think that's, that's fairly logic. We're just checking with, through the scientists to make sure that, this is, you know, that the GM crops are resistant in South Africa. Um, they have told us that when they've registered it in, in Argentina and Brazil, you know, they've registered it as such that it will have resistance against the, this particular army worm. So, so we are how, how does a, a crop have resistance against army worm? Does it just not taste good? I mean, how do they, yeah, uh, yeah. How do they provide yeah. protection to yeah, themselves? I'm no scientist, but I understand that there's some protein in the plant that the, the, the worm doesn't like the taste of it and then it doesn't eat it. Okay. And move on to something else. All right, so eat all the grass around. The cattle will get hungry, but they yeah. can have silage later on in yeah. the season. They'll be fine. Yeah. Um, how far has the army worm progressed in South Africa then? Yeah, so far we've just detected it in, in Limpopo province and, and in the northwest. Uh, there's also talk about Gauteng. Uh, the farmer that I've just spoke to before this interview uh, was in Settlers, just sort of about 800 kilometers north of Pretoria. Um, That's not very far at all. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a very rapid movement south, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. That's in a matter of weeks. Yeah. No, this is, this is something that is new to us and we have to deal with it to find out how we're going to protect our crops against that. Okay, I mean, at uh, what stage do you panic? I mean, uh, what sort of levels of devastation have you seen coming through Limpopo and Northwest? Yeah, yeah it's, I think it's very early days. I've seen a few fields, you know, especially maize uh, that was grown for seed purposes. Yeah. Have been, I mean, there was nothing left. It looks like even worse than hail, for instance. 
and then also so some what they, sweet they, corn. They, they go through, they eat the leaves, eat the stalks, yeah. eat, the, eat, eat yeah. the, the small cobs, yeah. everything. Yeah, they eat almost everything. There, there's just like a little stem standing there at the end of the day. So, so uh, they're very devastating. I think uh, if, we, if we are going to find resistance in our GM crops, it, the, the effect of it in South Africa won't be that big. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think for individual farmers, you know, that have planted non-GM stuff. And, Is it and insurable? I mean, you would have had to insure before. Would you have had to insure specifically against army uh, Because and, yeah. and, and, you know, these things are unlikely. Yeah, so yeah, you I, I don't think I don't think farmers would have insured anything. On, so this on can this. bankrupt farmers. I, I, uh, well, definitely. Individual farmers will definitely suffer very severely on this, and, and you know, especially after the drought. I think yeah. some of the farmers are phoning in and say, you know, I don't have any money left because, you know, I had to scrape everything together mm. to just get a crop in, you know, to find now 600 rand a hectare just to try and protect my crops very tough. Now, how are we spraying? Because uh, at this stage, maize crops in most areas will be, what, four or five foot high, so you yeah. can't get in there with implements. Yeah. You have to, yeah. you have yeah. to yeah. fly. In some instances, uh, we have high sprays that can still get in, but in mm. other instances, you have to do it by airplane. Which which explains the cost. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's 600 rand per hectare, uh, and a farm with 400 hectares, and you've got to yeah. you got, and you can't spray once. Um, yeah. You got to do repeat sprays. Yeah, probably. Um, and the maize crop, will what you get, 3,000 rand a ton. How many tons we're getting a hectare? Five or six? Yeah, uh, yeah. well, in the better yeah. areas, I mean, some areas only three tons. So this is. This I mean, is that the that, that that erodes profit margin. Absolutely. Completely. No, this is the trouble that that farmers are in. Yeah, so I know this is a deadly series. So what is the plan then the Grain SA has got to deal with this? Yeah, I think at the moment we're just making sure that all the farmers uh, talk to each other. We, we have like a, a, a app and WhatsApp groups and, and no, you know, on the web. You're kidding. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Buddha are on, uh, on WhatsApp. Uh, they, they are. <laughs> now we have to, to, to keep the farmers informed where are the, the stuff and what, what works the best. I think this is the other thing. Farmers are trying certain things and talk to their, their chemical reps and see what, what is the most effective to, to combat this issue. So, yeah, uh, I think information flow is most important and then to, to keep on registering new products that is effective uh, because some of the products haven't been registered with the department. So we're importing, we're importing yeah, stuff. All those is products. there not a, a, a risk that we don't really know what we're doing in terms of chemicals? Remember when DDT was introduced in the 70s, yeah. um, there was widespread devastation. Water sources were, were poisoned. How, mm -hmm. how much risk are we yeah, yeah, there? I think there, there is some risk, but I think most of those uh, chemicals have been registered in other countries okay. being used there. So, so it's not something that we you know, mixed and make a new thing. It, it is, you know, elements that has been, been registered in the past. So um, part of it is a risk because we can't, you know, test for everything because we want to get it as quickly as possible out to the farms. To is make there sure any it's subsidy available on this particular front? I mean, if this becomes a national crisis in terms of food security, yeah, yeah. Um, government's going to have to step in with some kind of subsidy at some point, surely. I have learned that the minister announced yesterday that they have made some application with Treasury. Um, you know, we hope that it will be in time. I think some of our new farmers have planted non-GM crops. Uh, they, they are probably going to be in, in big trouble and, and they are the ones who don't have the money necessary. Yeah. So we hope that government's going to come up with some uh, assistance in terms of a subsidy to, to help those farmers to protect their crops. I mean, how much, uh, we, we, this year's crop should make us self-sufficient, all things being equal, um, in terms of maize. We shouldn't have to import. I think the crop, we should have a, what you call an urskot, um, <laughs> excess uh, production, so that we can then export maize to places like Zambia and Zimbabwe, which have been so badly affected. Yeah, yeah, it's quite early days for yeah. the crop, but I think the conditions well, are it's, looking it's, good It's February, there. come on, the, 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 the cobs are forming. We can, yeah, yeah, it's like running lots. We, we'll see at the end of the month, I mean, the first crop estimate comes out, but I okay. mean, the, the, the crop looks good. Uh, we've received rain quite widely. I think there's some rain needed in the eastern part of the country, mm -hmm. but the west got some good rains over the weekend. But yes, we will be, we'll be able to help some people like Zambia and, and, and Zimbabwe. Those guys are buying from us irrespective of whether we've got a shortage or a surplus yeah. because we're close by and, you know. To the ports, yeah. 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 Now, okay, so we've wait, we're facing a, a, a concern. It's not yet a crisis. No. Um, the army worm is about 100 kilometers north of Pretoria. How fast? Does it move? I mean, if you picture a field yeah. full of maize, say <laughs> 10 hectares of maize, yeah. how long does a, yeah. a, a brigade of army yeah, worms yeah, take yeah, to move yeah. through? Is it an overnight job? Is it a week job? How long does it no, take? No, I, I, I don't, we don't have that information. I, I don't think we, we have got enough from, even the scientists don't understand all of these things and they're watching it and they into the fields at the moment collecting samples and checking it out. Uh, uh, but you know, from its name, it is, mm. uh, you know, you can, you can hear a little bit of momentum coming through. Um, I don't know whether they will go down into the, the, the colder parts of the country 
uh, we will have to wait and see. It's quite a scary. It's quite a scary prospect, isn't it? I mean, you, you, your members must be phoning you up uh, with with some levels of concern. Can you give assurances at this stage, or is it again too early to call? No, no, it's too early to call. I think the positive thing is we've detected it early. Yeah. You know, we alerted the farmers. They're checking their stuff, and wherever there's something, they they spray it. And I mean, w uh, but I don't think we need to panic at this point in time, especially if there's a resistance in the GM maize. Then you know, 85 percent of the crop is fairly safe if you can. Uh, I mean, the, the GM maize in industry must be going at last a bit of positive PR for GMAs because it gets, a, it gets a, a tough rap in South Africa. Well, if you look at the South African government's policy, the GM is part of mm. our food security plan and strategy. So, uh, yes, I think now they will at least look over the borders and see, you know, Zimbabwe has struggled because of this. Uh, but, I mean, there's other benefits as well. It's a fascinating discussion. It's a frightening discussion. Um, and the pestilence is moving south. Yanni de Villiers, Chief Executive of Grain South Africa. Picture a map of South Africa. You hear about uh, the army worm in Limpopo and in northwest. And it we shouldn't bug you too much. And then you hear it's at Settlers, and you go, I wonder where that is. Oh, it's just 100 k's north of Pretoria. It wasn't there a month ago. That's how fast these things are moving. Yes, the GM crops could be resistant uh, to this particular species of army worm, but hopefully there is that resistance. Hopefully the spraying works, and hopefully the threat is eradicated. We've had three years of drought. The last thing the agricultural sector needs is to have crops wiped out by pestilence. And the last thing you need is the price of every item of food you buy and put in your basket because the pigs eat the, the maize, the chickens eat the maize, you eat the chickens. You know how the cycle works. It becomes very, very expensive. Food inflation then becomes an issue. For now, don't let the maize crop worm bite. Good night. <laughs>